Hello everyone, thanks for watching my presentation of our work at this year's middle conference. In our paper, we proposed a new method called end-to-end -end path learning, which we aim to solve complicated host light tissue image analysis problems. I want to first briefly introduce computational pathology. So pathologists will examine the tissue slides of cancer patients on a microscope and make diagnosis based on it. These tissue slides will also be scanned and stored as very high resolution images. As this example here has 65,000 by 40,000 pixels. And the task of computational pathology is basically mapping from these host slide images to patient outcome. Patient outcome range from diagnosis towards prognosis, which is the patient's survival, as well as the response to various treatment. So the challenge for computational pathology mainly comes from two aspects. One is, as I mentioned before, these are gigapixel images. However, the useful information is carried at cellular level. Therefore, you can use a very low resolution um, a thumbnail image and train a classification based on them. On the other hand, these whole slide images are usually only associated with slide level information rather than local annotations. So to solve these bottlenecks of uh, host slide image classification, the existing methods utilize a two-stage approach in which the first step, they would train a tile encoder, which map from the image tiles to a latent variable Z, which is usually of much lower dimension than the image tiles. And in this way, they can then train a tile aggregation model that maps from this latent variable to the slide label. So here I make a table for summarizing the two stage approaches. One of the common task in computational pathology is cancer classification. And if we do have local annotation of the tumor regions, we can basically train the tile encoder using these tile labels. And then we can do aggregation of these tile scores to output a slide label. This aggregation can be as simple as voting. But if we don't have local annotation for cancer classification, then people propose to use multiple instance learning, basically in an ERM EM algorithm. The model itself will select which tiles to train and label with the pseudo labels, which basically equals to the slide label. But uh, with this assumption, this approach is only applicable to cancer classification for more complicated tasks like survival analysis, People propose to use unsupervised data e-training so that they can get information of all tiles and they can some, somehow um, aggregate more diverse information over the whole slide for these tasks. And these unsupervised laws, including reconstruction, self-supervision, basically they just use these constraints to train a tile encoder and get the tile features and then try an aggregation of these tile features to output uh, the target. Here are two examples. One is the uh, published by Campanella at 2019. They use a male approach with max voting to solve cancer classification problem. And the other is published by Drew in 2017. They use unsupervised training to get the tile encoder and then they cluster the tile features and select the important features for aggregation. So as you can see, the unsupervised data e-training basically want to combine diverse information over host slides for complicated tasks. However, the, in this way, they also decouple the training of data e and data i. Therefore, their tile encoder data e was never optimized against the slide label. But for uh, multiple instance learning approaches, they are selecting most predictive tiles and learning discriminative uh, features against the slide label. However, they have a very strong assumption that the tile score and the slide label has a very simple relation. So they are only applicable to cancer classification problems. So how do we combine diverse information of all tiles just like the unsupervised approaches as well as learn slide label from end to end so that the learned features can be discriminative the ideal end-to-end -end learning we want to map from all of the tiles 
to the sweat label, but this model is large. So we propose to represent the whole slide as k tile clusters in feature space so that the aggregation module theta a only needs to learn aggregation over k centroids rather than all tiles. And this k is much smaller than the number of tiles. But calculating the centroids by averaging the feature is still a very large computing graph. So we further relax this problem by instead approximating each centroid by the nearest tile in feature space so that we have k approximation tiles and we fade through these k tiles to the integrated model and output the slide label. This, this in the end is very small model. On the other hand, we also want to push the tiles in feature space towards their corresponding centroids to ensure that our approx approximation is good. So as you can see, this is the illustration of our proposed method. We tile the slides, get image tiles, and embed the image tiles to the feature space, concatenate the centroid approximation tile features, fade through the aggregation layer, output the slide label. So this is an end-to-end -end training from the slide label back to the image tiles. And on the other, other hand, we want to make sure the uh, centroid approximation is good, so we want to push tiles to centroids in feature space. So the first step of our proposed method is manifold initialization. We will first randomly assign all of the tiles from the whole training set to k groups, and we initialize the tile encoder theta e, and then calculate the global centroids by averaging the feature of the uh, tiles assigned to the same group, as I represent a red dot here. Each training slide is then a subset of the manifold, represented by these dashed regions, and they also have their slide-specific centroids, as I'm doing the red dots here. Then we select the nearest tile to represent these uh, slide-specific centroids, and fade these uh, representative tiles towards the integrated model, and also push these tiles towards their centroids by MSC loss then these two losses were trained concurrently. After the tau encoder theta e being optimized during training, the feature space will also change. Therefore, the tiles we selected in previous epoch for training might no longer be good approximation for centroids. Therefore, we have to calculate new global centroids by averaging the new feature of each part of the tiles assigned in previous epoch uh, to get the new global centroids, now we can then reassign tiles to new centroids. And then we can select the new approximation tiles based on this uh, new assignment. This iteration goes on and on during the training. Uh, usually this T minus 1 and the T is uh, 1 epoch. Although our proposed end-to-end -end learning method is aimed at solving more complicated host slide image prediction tasks, we also want to benchmark against the traditional task of cancer classification, in which setup we want to map the slide to a binary output between 0 and 1, which represents whether the slide has cancer or not. And, the ch and we chose the baseline of the work presented by Campanella in 2019, in which they use multiple instance learning and max voting to solve the prostate and the BCC cancer classification. As they claim that they reached clinical grade performance on these two very big data sets, it is important to note that in their paper, they are actually using super strong tau level labels because they label every tau of the negative slides as negative. For our proposed end to end part learning method, we can also combine this uh, concurrently trained loss, uh, but it's violating the nature of end to end for our proposed method. So we didn't use it, but nevertheless, our proposed uh, EPO also reached comparable results, which is clinical grade on these two uh, very big data sets. We had only four and six false negative slides i.e. the undetected cancer cases out of more than 1,500 test slides. This result is fantastic. Another task uh, in the scope of our paper is we also applied end-to-end -end part learning EPL on 
lung cancer architectural subtyping, in which setup we actually want to map a slide to a vector where each entry represents the existence of a certain subtype. And these subtypes uh, include lipidic, papillary, solid, and micropapillary. For this task, multiple instance learning is not applicable unless we have a substantial adaptation. And EPO also reached uh, quite promising results on this task. Beyond classification, the proposed EPO method can also provide rich information for the whole slides, which is very crucial for high quality clinical decision support. Basically for any task learned by EPO, the importance of various tile groups or various uh, parts can be estimated by averaging the feature attribution of that part. And as I'm showing here, is uh, what the EPO model is looking at for prostate and the BCC classification. Basically, every every row here represents uh, one part, basically one cluster of tiles, and every column represents one slide. And these are uh, eight tiles are the centroid approximation tiles the EPO has been uh, using or learned for the whole slide classification. And a one and a zero basically means the, the slide label. So as you can see, for prostate classification, it seems that the row seven here is the most important part. For positive slides, they always have one tile that is cancer belonging to this cluster. And for negative slides, it's either just missing this part or they have a tile that looks similar to cancer, but it's actually not cancer. And the EPO is uh, correctly classifying this. For BCC, there seems to be two rows that are important for the cancer classification. We surmise that this might be a various uh, morphological subtype of the BCC cancer. For multi-label lung cancer subtype prediction, we are working with a relatively small data set, which has about only 600 slides. But during the early stage of training, we also saw enrichment of the labeled subtypes in the learned clusters. For example, the row five, six, and uh, eight. And if we map the learned uh, clusters back onto the whole slide, we can basically do tissue type localization. Basically, different color represent different type of tissues. And because every learner cluster has its importance regarding the prediction task, we can give different regions important scores of the whole slide. In the end, I want to mention that EPO can be a general framework for the future of end-to-end -end whole slide image assessment. Because first of all, it's a general weekly supervised whole slide image prediction algorithm. It has the least assumptions and a theoretically applicable to any learnable slide level target. Just to give some examples, in our lab has already applied EPO for survival regression and saw some promising results. We are also trying EPO with a prediction of response to immunotherapy for lung cancer patients. On the other hand, EPO can be easily combined with the tile level proxy tasks by simply adding concurrently trained loss during the iteration of EPO training. For example, uh, we can add the tile labels or self-supervision targets. Therefore, it's a quite flexible framework to be combined with other, other tasks. And uh, during the paper, I have been using ResNet for the backbone of uh, tile encoder. But actually, the tile encoder theta e can be of various uh, forms. We are trying to use a graph neural network for whole slide classification based on uh, cell nuclei detection results. So that's the presentation. And here I want to thank my, uh, my lab. Everybody looks happy. And uh, I want to thank you for your watching of my presentation.